The lion is a lamb. The lion of the tribe of Judah is a lamb, people. It is a very, very important revelation to have. Otherwise, you will be deceived. Let me show you um, in Revelation 5, where we see that the lion of the tribe of Judah is not a lion, but is a lamb. But before I do that, let me just show you typically how this type of teaching will be presented to you. Yeah, it's a typical uh, video which presents the lion of the tribe of Judah. And it presents the lion and the physical state of Israel with its flag. And then it is going to tell you that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah and is going to connect it with the physical state of Israel. So let us go and look what does the Bible teach. Now, if you look in Revelation 5, it says uh, there, we will read that uh, first section from verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written um, and on written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. So there are so many things to look at here, but today we are going to focus here on the revelation of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Now, firstly, I want to say, if you go and look at all the scriptures in the Bible of lions, you will very seldom see them used in a positive sense. In the Old Testament, there is one that I know of that says um, the, the righteous is as bold as a lion. And um, then we know with Samson, the dead lion brought forth honey, but it was a dead lion. And then in the New Testament, um, of course, we have the lion of the tribe of Judah, which is Jesus Christ, which we do not um, uh, we we do not negate that or deny that. Yes, the lion of the tribe of Judah is Christ. But what is very very important to understand is that the lion is a lamb, because if you read it read it there. Oh, I must just add the lion is generally. Uh, a symbol of Satan. Peter tells us that your adversary, uh, the Satan walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So a lion um, is not meek like a lamb. A lion is a ferocious beast and is a symbol of Satan. And that is what I'm saying is, is this, the symbol of the lion is generally negative in the Bible. So, yeah, we have the line of the tribe of Judah, which is Jesus. So it says, behold, the line of the tribe of Judah. So look at him. And then he looked and then it again says, behold. And what does he see? He sees a lamb as though it had been slain, which we know is Christ. The lamb slain from the foundation 
of the world. And as um, as John said, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So please look here. The lion is a lamb. The lion is a lamb. Therefore, I use this picture that we know so well of the lion and the lamb lying down together. In, in the false teachings, they bring out the lion all by himself. You see, there's no lamb there because they are not interested in a lamb. They are not interested in Jesus, the real Jesus Christ, because this is a false Jesus, because it's one that comes and destroys all his enemies where Jesus said, I did not come to destroy, but to means lives, but to save. So let us look there um, at Isaiah 11. The whole Isaiah 11 is about this lion and the lamb and the wolf and everything lying, lying down together. So let us read um, this whole chapter, Isaiah 11. Um, and I want to remind you, if you want to um, understand truth, you need to have patient endurance. There are many uh, false teachers and false prophets that will give you the answer and they will make fun of those who differ from them and call them stupid and, call, and say they don't study their Bibles and call them all manner of names and um, make you scared if you do not believe them that um, this um, terrible destruction is coming upon you. But we are told by uh, uh, Paul when he spoke to Timothy, he said, study and show yourself approved. And the Bible keeps telling us through patient endurance and we must Test the spirits. So if you want a quick answer, you, you will probably get one from a false prophet or a fellow uh, um, student of the Bible who is deceived. Now, I am just your fellow disciple. I am not saying that I know everything. Um, I know uh, all I know is that in the times we live in, we need to keep the word. We need to guard his word and then he will guard us from the hour of temptation. Because that is what Jesus said to the Philadelphian church. He said they have little power, but they have kept his word. So let us look what the Bible says. But now please remember false Teachers twist the Bible. So through patient endurance, we will find uh, the answers. And uh, so we will read here in Isaiah 11. And I'm reading from the New King James Version because it reads easier than the King James Bible. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor. And decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins and faithfulness the belt of his waist. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young ones shall lie down together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall 
play by the cobra's hole, and the wind child shall put his hand in the viper's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day shall be a root of Jesse, who shall stand as a banner to the people. For the Gentiles shall seek him, and his resting place shall be glorious. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people who are left from Assyria and Egypt, from Pathros and Cush, from Elam and Shinar, from Hamath and the islands of the sea. So that is explaining the peace of Jesus Christ that he brings and that it is not about destroying in the holy mountain that all the enemies the viper and and the lion they've all been neutralized and they are actually submitting to the lamb they're lying down with a lamb you see because the lion is a lamb Jesus is the lamb. And then it says, in that day, there shall be the root of Jesse, who shall stand as a banner to the people, for the Gentiles shall seek him and his resting place shall be glorious. This tells us what is that day. It's not this day. It is when Jesus came. In that day, Jesus came and was set up as a banner to the nations, the Gentiles who sought him, they, it already happened. And his resting place is the rest we have in him, um, which the Bible speaks of, the, the, the rest of God that we enter into through Jesus Christ. So this already happened. This gathering happened because what happened was, when the the um, people were dispersed, um, some went to Babylon, some went to Assyria. Um, the the Israel was taken captive into Assyria, and Judah was actually taken into Babylon. Um, and this and and then they the Lord had them return to the land. And then he had the Messiah come. And if you will remember, it's Jesus said he only came for the lost sheep of Israel. So he preached to, to the, firstly to the remnant that was already there. And then it, he, he sent out the disciples to, 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 he said, go not in the way of the Gentiles but go to the lost sheep. So the lost sheep of Israel was in the Gentile nations. They were scattered in there. So the disciples went out and they they went and, and took the message of the gospel to, to the lost sheep. And some of those lost sheep were, were even... Um, of the tribe of Judah who were in Greece, because um, we read in the Bible that the tribe of Judah, some of them were sold into Greece, in Greece. So when we read that the Greeks came to Jesus, they they were they were not Gentile Greeks as we speak today. They were they had become Greeks, but they were actually Israelites. Um, they were from the tribe of Judah. And you will remember after Lazarus was um, resurrected, they actually came to Jesus. And then Jesus knew at that time that his crucifixion was near because you see the, the um, they were being gathered in. They came to Jerusalem. And then when the, the Holy Spirit was poured out. Many were gathered together there. And then they took the message out again. And Paul then took it also to the um, non 
Israelite Gentiles. So this gathering a second time is under Jesus. You see, the, it's the second exodus. It's the exodus out of Babylon because they, their religion had become a Babylon. It had become as a Egypt in Revelation, the um, in Revelation, uh, I think it's 17 or 18, the city where the Lord was slain is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. So you see, just like Moses led the Israelites, um, the Hebrew nation, out of Egypt, so Jesus was like a second Moses, and the second Exodus was taking them out of the spiritual Babylon that their religion had become under the Pharisees because the Pharisees had all sorts of traditions and evil practices, much of which also they picked up in Babylon and all over. And it is written that oral law that Jesus was so set against is what became the Babylonian and the Jerusalem Talmud. You see? So the religion of Judaism is not what you think the old religion of the Bible. It's not what uh, what the patriarchs believed and what the what the um the people believed. It's the traditions that the traditions of the fathers that uh, Jesus said that um, actually annul the word of God that was written after the temple was destroyed and after Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD. God destroyed that whole system. You see, that is the destruction of that spiritual Babylon um, because um, they rejected Jesus Christ when he came. And from that, the, the um, rabbis, they wrote down the Talmud, and that is where Judaism comes from. That is the religion that is, that is preached today in, in, in Israel. Um, it is rabbinic Judaism. It is not the religion of the Bible. And there are many many people who have done research, not only Christians, but others also. You need to go do your research on that because otherwise you are being duped and being told this is the second exodus. This, we as the Christians are going through this same thing now where the spiritual Babylon we in are in is going to be judged. This is done with for, for the physical um, Hebrew nation, which became Israel. The people of today are not even called Israelites. They're called Israelis. Israelis. And um, it is, they are, they are lying to you. They are setting up you for a antichrist. Now, let us look here also, because this line of the tribe of Judah, people imagine this as a violent Jesus that is going to make terrible war. But that is what the, the, the Messiah that the Jews are waiting for is going to do. So let us look, how does Jesus make war? Because Jesus never killed anybody in his, in his flesh. Um, he did not do that. Even when Jerusalem was uh, destroyed, it was through their own wickedness that their own enemies, the Romans, destroyed them. Now let us look what does Jesus do. We know he told Peter to put away the sword and he said those who live by the sword will die by the sword. So let us see if what does this lion, which is a lamb, use to make war. It says here in Isaiah 11, 
um, in verse 4, the last two um, lines here, it says, He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. So it tells us here, the weapon of the Lord is his words of his mouth or the breath of his lips. In other words, by speaking the truth, by the word of God. Here in Revelation 19, we see it again about Jesus. Um, the true and faithful witness. It says, now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations and he himself shall rule with the rod of iron. So it's the same principle here, the rod of his mouth. Do you see the rod of iron is the rod of his mouth and the um, sharp sword goes out of his mouth. What is it? The breath of his lips by which he slays the wicked. You see, so the it is not a carnal weapon. Yeah, Paul tells us, he says, he says the following, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. How are you going to punish disobedience? Are you going to kill them physically? No, you're going to use the spiritual um, non-carnal weapon, which we know here is told the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So this is the weapon of Jesus, the weapon which he uses. Okay. And this is the weapons that we, the, the weapon that we use and the um, armor that we need to to stand in this war, which is just picking up day by day. Um, so please, you need to get this uh, revelation that the lion is a lamb. Jesus already came and he came as the lion of the tribe of Judah, which is a lamb. And he already, already gathered he gathered his people, his remnant, and and he he gathered also all the nations which now seek him, and out, he has a beautiful resting place. We we rest when we stop our works, when we stop trying to to serve God through through um, dead works and through works of the law. And no man will be saved by, by the keeping of the law. Because the law is just to show us we are sinful. If we try and use it to, to show ourselves um, uh, um, that we, we can keep it or we use the law to try and save us, then it will kill us, you see. So this is really really important so yeah i've also um i'm looking at hebrews 4 because it beautifully speaks of this race that we see here in isaiah 11 and his resting place shall be glorious let us look at that rest. If you look here in Hebrews 4, it says, For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterwards have spoken of another day. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. This means that we stop trying to, to serve God by our own works and we we um 
believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and we trust in the work that he did for us. So by faith you are saved and it is the gift of God. Then it goes on beautifully, yeah, speaking of the rest and then bringing it to this spiritual weapon. Uh, I only uh, saw this now um, because it's it's beautiful because in Isaiah it speaks of his his weapon and then the glorious rest and yeah in Hebrews again we have the glorious rest for the people of God and yeah we can read about the weapon it says let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So, yeah, it is telling us that this, the, this, um, the word of God is a sh sharp sword that can help us to rightly divide the word of God and discern the truth and even discern the thoughts and intents of hearts because you can clearly see when people are reviling um, uh, Bible believers, calling them anti-Semites angrily and saying that since they, they um, say that that the believers are the Israel of God, they are haters and anti-Semites, and they are looking forward to this terrible lion that is going to just kill everybody. It discerns their thoughts and their intents. It, it discerns what they want, you see, because Jesus said to the uh um, apost uh, apostles when they wanted to bring down fire from heaven um, because the people did not believe um, in what he said. They said to him, Lord, shall we uh, call down fire from heaven as Elijah did? And the Lord rebuked them and he said, he, he said, that they, they do not know what spirit they are of because the son of man, man did not come to destroy man, men's lives, but to save men's lives. And how does he do it? By speaking the truth. And how do we do it? By speaking the truth and preaching the, the gospel. The Lord is already reigning. We are already in heavenly places. Now, it's too much to go through all that we we, in time, if the Lord allows me, I will show you slowly all these things. But please know that this time of the physical Israel, that was ended in 70 AD. There is a second coming and a second exodus, but it is now the Lord is working with the whole world. You see? So it is something else. Um, and so I really recommend that you must understand what is meant in the Bible with the Israel of God and what is the seed of Abram. Because if you don't understand that, you are going to be terribly deceived. You, you already are. Now, you may be somebody who already knows what I am saying. Then my words will be a witness to you and a comfort to you. I'm not speaking to you because I hear already great accusation towards uh, the, the believers. Um. I come, I speak comfort to you if you can see these things. If you haven't seen it um, or you're only starting to see it now, I plead with you, please. Uh, there are many, many false prophets. Uh, they are everywhere and they are multiplying as we speak and they are very proud and very sure of themselves and they are um, 
they are counting us among the transgressors as the Bible said of Jesus. He was counted among the transgressors. So there are many um, people, many rebellious people who are who are standing for Palestine and who are on the side of Hamas. And now because of these scriptures, we are going to be counted with them. That is the trick, you see? That is the trick of Satan. It's always how it works that, that we get set up like this. But this, these things should have been spoken of long ago. You see, because that's what happens when we do not um, speak the truth to our brothers, but remain quiet because it is easier. And then Satan is able to set a trap for, for, the, for the innocent and a trap for those who are in Christ. So remember, the line of the tribe of Judah is is the lamb.